Welcome ladies and gentlemen, Commodity TV here out of our studio in Heresal in Switzerland. And uh, we want to talk today, we want to have an update interview from Craig Perry, the CEO of ISO Energy. And of course, we want to talk about their terrific summer grill program on the one hand. And of course, we want to talk about uranium markets because it looks like that we are entering a little bit of a tipping point here, Craig. Great that you found the way here to Heresau, and thank you very much for taking the time. <laughs> thank you, Jochen. Thank you. Very, very happy to be here. Absolutely. Great. And um, I think we spoke last time, it was like January, February this year, mm -hmm, um, I mm -hmm, suppose. Mm -hmm. And a lot of good things happened so far. Yes. Let's start with the company. You did nice summer drill holes, uh, drill program, but also you had some very good winter drill holes. Maybe you want to comment a little bit on that and on the hurricane zone, your great discovery. Sure, absolutely. Because, of course, we made that discovery back in Gen uh, July yep. last year. Yep. Uh, we've now done two serious campaigns. We did a winter campaign, mm -hmm. um, got some very good results out of that, proved up, you know, a, a modest strike length back in uh, winter. Mm -hmm. Then we kicked off drilling back in uh, June. June this year, mm -hmm. uh, we've drilled 17 holes over the summer program. 17. Put out most okay. of those results. How now. many meters was that? Approximately? Uh, that was about 6,000, uh, 6,200 mm -hmm. meter program. So mm -hmm. a really substantial program. One of the biggest uranium exploration programs for a junior company in some years, I think. Uh, and the results have been really very, very strong. We're, we're happy with those results. We've now proven up a strike length of over 500 metres mm -hmm. to that hurricane zone. Uh, you know, we've got some really spectacular numbers, you, you, you know, sort of 8 metres at 6% yeah. eight, these sorts of numbers. So wow. really typical of those, um, you know, high-grade Athabasca Basin deposits. Mm -hmm. So we're happy with how that's shaping up. Uh, you, you know, we're some way off getting a resource. We haven't closed off many of the sections yet. So, mm -hmm. you know, I think investors going forward can expect us to drill on section uh, and, and, you know, you'd expect some, some results commensurate with what we've seen in the past there. Mm -hmm. And then we've got a 250-metre step out and we've got to go on back in infill in along there. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's been a very, very good program. We're, we're excited about the results. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, as I say, some way off a resource, but we'd like to think towards the back end of next year we'll be getting there mm -hmm. for a, a maiden resource. And then, um, look, the other thing that was exciting is that we did a ground resistivity survey. We've mm -hmm. only just got the results back, and it looks like we just drilled this, the uh, western tip of what is a very big, prominent mm -hmm. uh, resistivity anomaly out to the east of the hurricane zone, so right in the middle mm -hmm. of our property um, the results we saw there are very similar uh, to some of the results we've seen around those discovery holes that we've had. Uh, good, you know, thick, 50 metre thick intersections of elevated radioactivity. Wow. Uh, very strong alteration all the way through the sandstone. Uh -huh. So we're quite excited to get out and test that eastern extent and, and that anomaly out there. So look out for uh -huh. those. Uh, you, you know, we're working up a drill program at the moment. We've got the whole team coming to Vancouver uh -huh. uh, in a couple of weeks' time. We'll sit down and go through our planning and budgeting process, uh -huh. um, as we do every year, and then work out exactly what we want to do. But I think, you know, ideally we'll have two drill rigs on the ground come winter uh -huh. uh, and, and drilling more of that, oh, okay. well, uh, that, that's that a strike lot extent. So, so yeah. Well, fantastic. Have you released all results yet, or no. is there still some news flow coming up now? The We've, next, uh, let's say, weeks and months? Sure. Look, we had a, a good consistent flow of news over the summer, of course. Uh, we've put out all of our scintillometer results for, for all holes, so that's up to hole 29. We did a 17-hole program there, of course, mm -hmm. so hole 29 was the last of those holes. We, we haven't got the assays back mm -hmm. for all of those holes yet, uh, so look out for a news release in the next couple of weeks with those numbers. Uh, and if, you know, if the viewers look towards... Uh, the last couple of holes in those scintillometer mm -hmm. results, which we put out two weeks ago, that'll mm -hmm. give a fair indication of what's coming on the assay front. I think those numbers should look pretty interesting to 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 mm -hmm. the company, to to investors. Mm. Okay, so we can yeah look forward to some quite good results. Uh, look, I, yeah. I think so, and, and you know we we've been busy on other things there as well. Uh, as you know, our strategy is to mm. put our foot on as much of that. Um, very prospective eastern Athabasca, mm -hmm. particularly around where we are on the northern tip there, mm -hmm. uh, quite close to that McLean Lake Mill, of course, not far away from uh, uh, Rio Tinto's Rough Rider project, which mm -hmm. they acquired in their acquisition of Hathor uh, back in 2012. They paid $600 million for that. That's mm -hmm. only 20 kilometres away from us. So very, very prospective terrain. We've continued to try and put our foot on more mm -hmm. of that Athabasca. Fantastic. And we've done a little bit of staking recently, so mm -hmm. look out for that sort of news as well. Yeah. Uh, and that leads into, you, you know, typically what we see is when we start to announce that we're going to be drilling 
um, a little bit of heat comes into the stock price with the anticipation of that program. So mm -hmm. look out for all of that news come sort of November, December. Mm -hmm. Okay, fantastic. Before we come into the uranium market, um, I think it is uh, on, the, on the one hand, of course, the hurricane zone is the big discovery that is fantastic, that is outstanding, but you also have some more projects like Geiger, uh, Thorburn Lake, yep, yep. Yeah, stuff like that. Um, so you are in elephant territory. Adabasca Basin is outstanding. Yeah, some of, of the biggest mines are there sure. in the world. Uh, the biggest, uh, let's say, not only discoveries, but uh, projects are there, of course. So there's no doubt about infrastructure and yep. uh, no doubt about uh, yeah where you are from the geology. So what is, let's say, the next work plan on your other call it like projects you have or, or properties you have? Yeah, look, sure. Of, of course, we do have, you know, we've grown a, a much larger tenement position mm -hmm. out there. I think we've now got 14. S since we sort of spun the company out of NextGen, we inherited mm -hmm. five good projects out of NextGen. Mm -hmm. uh, we've now built up a portfolio of uh, 14 projects. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of those, of course, our strategy is to go in and look for the next-gen arrow-type deposits under mm -hmm. the unconformity, mm -hmm. uh, and we've got plenty of um, targets on that basis. But the mm -hmm. other thing, of course, is the, the key part of the strategy is put our foot on properties with mineralised intercepts yep. Um, that were drilled sort of during that time from 2000, during the last boom, 2006 through to 2010. Mm -hmm. uh, Mineralised intercepts that have never been followed up. And, of course, our Geiger mm -hmm. property is the best example of that. La Roque mm -hmm. East, where we've got our hurricane deposit, we've got another five mm -hmm. mineralised intercepts that have never been followed up. Mm -hmm. But Geiger's very exciting. We've got uh, over 10 mineralised or elevated geochem intercepts on that property. Again, never effectively followed up. So we really want to get in and start drilling on those as well. Uh, for the time being, Hurricane will absolutely be the focus. Mm -hmm. That's the best bang for the buck. We'll get good results out of there, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. um, but, uh, you know, we're, we're quite excited to get mm -hmm. in and test some of those other targets we've got as well. I think, you, you know, we've got 25 ranked and prioritised targets across mm -hmm. the properties. Oh, that's uh, a a lot. lot of Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> and a lot of those are associated with those mineralised intercepts. Yeah. Any one of those could be tantamount to a discovery hole so mm -hmm. uh, we've got to get in and do that work of course mm -hmm. so it looks like a busy 2020 oh very very busy <laughs> very busy yes great um i mean you have an outstanding shareholder registry i would call it the who is who yes of the uranium yeah. spaces in there maybe you want to elaborate a bit yeah, on that yeah look we're, we're very privileged on that front because of course we are a spin out of next gen mm -hmm. uh lee courier our chairman the, the founder of next gen energy uh, i helped him set that up um you know he's he's our chairman he's the ceo of next mm -hmm. gen very supportive big shareholder mm -hmm. next gen sits there on the register with 53 percent of the company they've contributed significantly to each of the last mm -hmm. couple of capital raises including the $5.5 million bought deal we did, did back through Cormark and PI mm -hmm. in December. Um, Next Gen contributed $1.5 million of that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they're, they're very, very supportive um, and, and, you know, we can call on Lee and the team for advice and support mm -hmm. and, you know, some of the geological thinking around those basement hosted deposits. And then apart from Next Gen, we've got Cameco there with 5.4%. Mm -hmm. uh, again, a very supportive shareholder. They're mm -hmm. watching very closely what, what we're doing at Hurricane. Of course, Hurricane's right next door to their yeah. Dawn Lake joint venture. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're all, their eyeballs are firmly on on that project and what we're doing there. We've got Arano, Arano mm -hmm. of course being the name. Uh, mm -hmm. The old Arriva. Arriva, right. that, yeah. that's right, yeah, the, yeah. the French uh, giant. So they're there with 2%. So we've got, you know, it is a who's mm. who. But apart from that, we've got a number of really good, solid institutional investors as mm -hmm. well. We've had guys like Warren Irwin from Rosso Asset mm. Management, CQS out of London mm -hmm. come on the register. We've had the guys at Segra Capital. Segra, mm -hmm. a fantastic team. Um, they've been buying stock on market and taking a big position mm -hmm. in the company, they tell us. So, you know, we're very, very well supported for a junior. I suppose the thing, the, the reason these guys are, are coming on board is that they see us as, um, they recognise us for what we are. We're the mm -hmm. only junior with a new high-grade discovery in the Athabasca Basin, mm -hmm. you know, drilling hard at the moment yeah. and, and, and putting out results. So we're getting good support mm -hmm. from the market. Yeah, yeah and I mean, I've, and I think from 12 holes you drilled, 11 were like, High grade. 
right? Yes, that's, that's right. A, that's a sensational hit rate, isn't oh, it? Oh, tremendous rate. <laughs> Look, you, you, you know, I, as, as I say to, to yeah. Steve Blower, our Vice President mm-hmm. of Exploration, he's either very good at what he does or very mm-hmm. lucky. And, um, <laughs> you know, I, I know the team's exceptional. Yeah. They, they do a tremendous Super. job of targeting. Fantastic. Maybe one word to the uranium market, because this is what we get uh, already from viewers. We get some sure. questions. What does it look like? You hear about Kassadam Prom putting down 20% of the production, Cigar yep. uh, Lake shut down, uh, yeah, McLean, etc., etc. So uh, a lot of uh, production was taken out of the market already, mm. and uh, but the uranium price did not really move yet. I mean, we moved from 17 to 25 Nice, but it does not uh, does not make the market by now, yeah. Um, so maybe from where came some, um, um, yeah, supply you did not expect, mm, or mm. W- what? What's the situation on the market? Yeah, look, uh, I, I suppose. Yeah, technically in the uranium market, we're in a bull market, of course. Mm. We've seen, as you say, the price go from $17 to all the way up to $29 a pound there earlier this year. It's drifted back to $24, $25 a pound today, um, but but up substantially, up over 40% year mm. on year. So that's technically a bull market. Of course. Yeah. Um, equities haven't largely followed suit. I think there's sort of a, a little bit of doubt that that mm. uh, uranium price is sustainable and going to continue mm-hmm, up. But mm-hmm. Of course, what we do know is that um, th- that rise in price is based at on those fundamental supply side cutbacks mm. that you talk about there. Mm. So MacArthur River, of course, mm. being the biggest of those, um, you know, very no, interesting. MacArthur, not McLean, Mac- sorry. Yeah, I've that, 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 <laughs> <laughs> no, um, and of course, you, you know, what happens around this time of year, we were all in London for the mm. WNA conference, the mm-hmm. World Nuclear Association mm-hmm. Symposium, where you get, you know, from all the way from us explorers up to producers mm-hmm. and, and all of so the So the family was together. We all get together. We all get together. <laughs> in London and, yeah. and talk about that over a beer. Mm-hmm. And um, and what we what we heard there, you know, was very, very positive. On the demand side, good, mm-hmm. strong growth, you mm-hmm. know, 2% two, 2% two year on year at the moment. We've now seen demand rise to levels above the pre-Fukushima mm-hmm. level. So, you know, that's gone, gone well. Um, and I, I guess the other thing is, of course, they put out their WNA biannual uh, WNA mm-hmm. report uh, on supply demand dynamics, mm-hmm. and and you know it was quite clear that in the last year the world's built more nuclear reactors last year than any other year before in the history mm-hmm. of the planet. So you know demand is growing very very yeah. solidly, and the supply side is is where it's at. Of course mm-hmm. those challenges, but very interestingly with with Cameco, clo- you know you hear tits and tidbits uh, yeah. on on the side of the conference, and what we heard from Cameco is that they confirmed that they, you know they pulled their bids from the spot market earlier this year because mm-hmm. of traders front front running that trade. Mm-hmm. Uh, they've now come back into the market. Mm-hmm. Well, they're starting to come back into the market. They sort of sat on the sidelines for six months. Mm -hmm. Uh, But we had it confirmed that they need to buy 12 million pounds Mm -hmm. over the coming few months and before the end of the year. Um, and it was made. The point was made to us that last year they bought four million pounds in the back end of the year. That was enough to drive the price from seventeen dollars a pound all the way up to twenty nine dollars a mm-hmm. pound. Uh, now they've got to buy three times that amount over the next four months. Um, so you know our expectation uh, as an industry is that we should see prices substantially mm-hmm. above thirty dollars a pound. We see it in the last couple of days. It's looking a bit exciting. You know, yeah, the spot something price is, has picked up. Yeah, something is going on. Yeah, something's <laughs> going on. It's, it's starting to. Pick up so you know yeah. where I think we're finally there. You know that mm. um, in in for a good run. Mm-hmm. Um, of course, we don't focus too much on that. We're going to stick to our knitting, drilling at home, putting yeah. out good Do results, moving yeah, things forward. Sure. But um, you, yeah. you know, it wouldn't hurt to see a bit of a bull market Oof. emerge. Of course, yeah, especially when the, when the mood changes really in the positive uh, territory. I would Absolutely. call it. Absolutely. Super. Absolutely. Well, great. Thank you very much. Uh, great insight and. Uh, I think you have done in the last months a lot of things right with the team together with Steve and uh, the guys on the ground. And uh, I would say keep hitting, uh, show us some more good drill results and then hopefully by next year, summer, whatever, a nice resource. Yeah, that would absolutely. Be great. <laughs> no, no, thanks, Jochen. We'll, we'll, we'll do that. Absolutely. Super. Good on Thank you very much. Cheers. Great. Thank, Thank you. you. Cheers. Yeah, ladies and gentlemen, it was Craig Perry, the president and CEO of ISO Energy. And you heard it. They've done a lot of good work this year already. They discovered the hurricane zone last year already, but uh, still the drill program was very, very successful. Fantastic double-digit uranium grades. And um, yeah, I think uh, for an explorer, they did it exactly right. They have the shareholder registry to really move on. I think financing is not a problem for this company. And uh, also, 
12 from 12 holes, 11 hit it, high grade uranium. This is a fantastic success rate. Um, let's keep fingers crossed that, that they move on like this. And I have a very good feeling with the uranium market itself because always when you, uh, a supply deficit is arising, it doesn't matter in what commodity, we normally see very soon the price of the commodity in the spot market also moving. And so from that side, check out the company. Thanks for watching us and bye-bye from Switzerland. <music>